uh, Jenya is, is really good. Okay. Right. Um, what it doesn't do. So it's best for where creativity is needed, where you actually need to generate something. Correct. Okay. So for example, I was talking to people who are like, hey, we are supply chain folks. Okay. Uh, can we use Gen AI in supply chain? I'm like supply chain is a determinate problem where right. all the variables are known to you. You the it's a massive optimization problem which requires better quality optimization techniques or operations research techniques. Okay. Yeah. And these are determinate problems. Gen AI is not going to help you. A lot of the business problems we have today, hmm. they are mostly determinate problems. Okay. How do I match the best driver to the rider? It is there are ten drivers, there are ten riders who placed orders. Now it is no amount of creativity is needed. You need optimization and operations research there. Hi friends and welcome to another exciting episode of Leading with Data. Today, I have David with me. So David is uh, Director of Data Science at Uber, and he has worked at some of the most uh, exciting consumer companies uh, like uh, Meta and Face, uh, Meta and Swiggy before this. And also, he brings in a lot of experience working with uh, uh, Mu Sigma as well. So I think he's someone who has seen both sides of the world, products, services, consumer facing. So, so there is immense to be learned from David and I'm looking forward to the discussion. David, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Really, really nice to be here. Great. So, uh, David, just uh, to start from your, your, you know, on your journey from, let's say, early days, right? So you have uh, uh, done your MBA, you you uh, finished your engineering. So so can you tell a bit about your you know early days and then how did your uh, uh, career in data science or analytics, whatever it was called at that time, started and and what were those early days uh, for you? So I I can break up my professional life into three pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, about five years of formative years, mm -hmm. ten years of uh, data science consulting and five years of working in tech companies, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a biochemical engineering graduate from IIT Delhi. And okay. after graduation, I joined a company which was working on computational biology. So mm -hmm. you can think of it as data science for biology. Uh, we were mm -hmm. trying to discover drugs using computers, like a heavy hardcore algorithms kind of work. Mm -hmm. Really loved that job. Um, then I did my MBA. Mm -hmm. And after my MBA, um, I always liked tech. So I joined mm -hmm. Intel after my MBA. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't put me in tech. They put me in sales. Okay. Okay. Um, I was doing. Uh, I was selling computers to South India governments. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely hated that job. Okay. <laughs> so I quit it in like a year and a half, two years, and mm -hmm. uh, and and then formally moved into uh, data science profession. Okay. Um, I, and in, uh, I mean, uh, any uh, any specific reason why you know uh, you were chosen for sales, and then uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, at, at back in the day, they had uh, something called the rotational program, mm -hmm. where they would hire MBA graduates, okay. and they'll go through like five or six rotations, okay. and then whatever they're good at, whatever they like, they can choose mm -hmm. it. But by okay. the time I joined, it was. Um, they were going through a phase where the competition from AMD was very strong and uh, losing yeah. market share and there were actually layoffs that happened. Mm -hmm. So they're like, we don't want to rotate anymore. You just get allotted to this one. Yes, that's right. Anyway, sales mm -hmm. skills were really uh, important for the rest of my career. I didn't realize it at that time, but I would recommend two years of sales to everybody. Um, yeah. so that's that's fine. Um, then I spent 10, 10 years in uh, music bar. Uh, mm -hmm. which at some point was the world's largest in the space. Um, mm -hmm. And I joined when they were 200 and they grew to about 5,000 or so. So mm -hmm. I was part of the whole story as well. So as part mm -hmm. of Music My, I consulted probably with um, 25 different customers. Um, primary was I spent five years at Microsoft on their, uh, uh, most of my work was on the online ads, both search mm -hmm. ads, display ads, as well as content-based ads. Um, mm -hmm. so 
a lot of expertise developed there. Uh, I've also managed large teams of up to 500 people. Uh, I've also ran PNLs. Um, so I was running all of the Europe region uh, in 2017 and 18. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, 10 years in New Sigma, I left New Sigma in 2018. Um, when I got this opportunity at Swiggy, moved back to India, um, moved into the product companies. Um, mm-hmm. um, I loved my time at Swiggy because Swiggy had really good complex problems unsolved complex problems and mm-hmm. we were also building the, the, the team was fairly built but i took the team from about 30 people to about 150 people when i left so that's i was part of that growth as well uh, and swiggy itself was doing very well very good consumer brand and the business itself dies if the data work is not good quality work um, the science is not good um, so critical role i really enjoyed my time there uh, i spent three years at swiggy then i said i want to play on the global stage um, so, um, so Meta gave me an offer in London, um, trying to keep people safe on their platforms. Um, and any bad stuff that happens, we got to use data science to catch it and remove it. That's that's the thing. Um, there are about 150 kinds of bad things that happen. Uh, my teams were responsible for roughly half of them. Um, um, so that's what happened. Um, at the same time, I got the the Facebook offer, my wife also had a new job. Hers okay. was in Bangalore, whereas mine was in London. Oh, wow. So we were we were not sure what to do. So we said, let's just do two cities for one year and then see what happens. Mm-hmm. So in, in the one year, my wife got two promotions. She made oh. the executive leadership team of her company. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was like, hey, you know, she's doing so well. I need to get back to India. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was looking to go back to India and Uber reached out and said, they are hiring somebody uh, in India. Um, mm-hmm. So I moved back to India with Uber. So I, I love Uber because it's a mix of a bunch of good things. Uh, a, it is similar to Swiggy in the sense that it's a business with really complex problems, um, yeah. uh, an industry that I'm familiar with as well. And data science is critical to the running of the company. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, it's also a top global tech company. Uh, right. And my role is actually based in India, but delivering for the entire world. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, uh, and of course, I get to spend time with family. Okay, uh, uh-huh. and uh, also Uber is Uber's strategy is to see if we can do tech globally. Um, mm-hmm. So about thirty percent of all of tech is in India, um, mm-hmm. but it's primarily engineering at this point of time. Uh, so with me joining, they want to invest a lot more in data science as well. So I will build up the data science team in India. Um, so again, um, a growing team which we're building. So really excited for my roles here. Wow, great! That's that, my- that's, <laughs> that's quite a lot of you know different kind of experience from sales to leading large teams to owning PNLs and then you know consumer problems. So let let me kind of you know talk a bit about each of them and and different aspects uh, of Mm -hmm. uh, each of those right so uh, so first of all you know uh, uh, between spending let's say 10 years at Mu Sigma to then uh, moving to uh, Swiggy just one second go on one second I'll keep a pause for a second just Sorry about that. There was a bell ringing, so it was, yeah. So uh, coming back, so you know, spending uh, ten years with a company like Mu Sigma and then moving to uh, a very product and problem focused company, where uh, I'm presuming a lot more dynamic environment in terms of you know uh, problems because the company was uh, at, at a fast growth rate. So, so how was it for you personally to you know adopt? Uh, to a very different landscape and were the demands very different or you uh, because you had experience of solving different problems uh, you you could kind of uh, do that so how was that uh, for you there a lot of thoughts there okay Mm -hmm. Uh, first and foremost I was very happy with Swiggy the reason was uh, in a consulting role you are not fully in the company to to make changes happen okay Mm -hmm. Uh, when you're in the company, um, 
you are there until the data makes money right you're doing yeah. data science uh, but you're not doing data science for the data science work right you're doing it for right. making the business you are there through the entire journey you're working with product teams engineering teams um, design teams to ensure that all of these is done properly um, mm -hmm. that end to end ownership um, is a higher responsibility but it's higher satisfaction as well okay mm -hmm. um, that is something that i really enjoyed uh, mm -hmm. and because swiggy had complex problems uh, that were unsolved um, mm -hmm. my knowledge of having a wide breadth of experience okay um, was was very useful in this case okay? yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah so so like for example i was talking about so uber has something called uber shuttles mm -hmm. okay? these are buses that we run okay yeah uh, live in five cities in india um, we noticed that some of the seats at the time of booking were go empty okay? mm -hmm. So my scientist came and said, hey, you know what, is there a way we can play with pricing to uh, to fill those seats up? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to do some fancy research on this and figure out what's the best pricing for shuttles. Uh, then I said, you don't need to do the research uh, mm -hmm. because this problem has been solved by the airlines industry. Okay, So I used okay. to work with Southern Airlines in the US. Um, yeah. So I know it's been solved. So I think there are papers already written on this topic. You just go and read the papers and just implement them. You don't have to mm -hmm. Uh, those kind of things I, I do have access to because I've done this in the past. Right? So that, that kind of things is very useful uh, at Swiggy as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's that's one. The, mm -hmm. the big change that I had to learn uh, is saying yes versus saying no. Okay. Correct. So in consulting, the more you say yes, the more money you make. Okay. <laughs> hey, can you do Gen AI for me? Yes, I can do Gen AI for you. Okay. Right. Uh, but it's useful or not is a separate question because, you know, Gen AI makes me money. I will say Gen AI. Okay. Yeah. Um, in 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 uh, the product world, your resources are limited, and yep. you are playing with a small number of really high quality people. Hmm. And the more you say yes, the more the team is burdened. Correct. They may be working on unimpactful projects. Um, that in, in limited resources, you want to choose the most impactful one. So right. at, at at in product companies, it's hmm. about what you say no to. Because mm -hmm. if you say a bunch of no's, then the yes you say are the high impact projects, and Correct. that's the ROI for the team that you're working on. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that's another big cultural change that I had to do, uh, mm -hmm. and also from like a, just a personal perspective, right? Mm -hmm. um, Ten years in uh, music, I had a reputation in the company. Like when I walk into a room, people yeah. know my personality and things like that. Okay, right. mm -hmm. I kind of went to Swiggy and assumed that. That's the same. Okay? <laughs> like, for example, I'm a very direct uh, speaker. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever I do, I might just say it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I went to Swiggy and I just behaved like that. And, yeah. and then people were like, you are a strange, like you're behaving like differently. We are not very yeah. happy about it. And then mm -hmm. they realized that, you know what, the 10 years of reputation in the previous company doesn't stand for much. You have Correct. to go and build your reputation once again uh, in Swiggy. And then yeah. I, I spent another month and the same team, which were like, uh, we don't like you at the end of two months was like, we love you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I did the same thing at Facebook and now I'm doing the same thing at Uber as well, which mm -hmm. is every time you join a new company, you have to build your reputation from scratch. Okay. Right. Uh, so that's another thing that I had. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this was, uh, uh, just for the context. So you joined Swiggy, uh, in November, 2018, and then you spent about three years and a few months. So this was also the period where, uh, uh you know, Swiggy would have grown leaps and bounds and, and, you know, the demands would have seen periods like covid post covid. So, uh, so among the range of problems, you worked on right uh, uh, uh any specific interesting problem you remember which was you know al almost had let's say no data points or, or didn't have uh or a very tricky problem which you could share uh from that period uh, uh, so maybe from a business perspective mm -hmm. um uh, march 2020 uh, mm -hmm. when the lockdown was announced yeah. Overnight, we lost 90 plus percent of our business. Correct. Okay. Uh, just, just just went away. Um, mm -hmm. And the company was in an existential crisis at that point. Correct. Um, 
and uh, so it just stands not because of any analytical complexity of this like more of um, the chief operations officer and the mm -hmm. ops teams doing all the good work um, mm -hmm. but we actually got into um, like a whatsapp group with all mm -hmm. the top people in the company so that we are able to work 24 7 as needed mm -hmm. um, to and because I don't know, uh, the the lockdown was national level lockdown, okay. but it's implemented at a local level, at a at a district level, mm -hmm. okay. and each district interpreted the things in a different way. Okay. For okay. example, most of Punjab and Tamil Nadu didn't have Swiggy the entire lockdown. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there are other places who are like, you know, it's safer for people to have Swiggy <laughs> than to go to a restaurant, so they right. are encouraging it. Okay. Yeah. The other places were like, no, no, we want to food delivery. Mm -hmm. Kill them, right? Mm -hmm. um, every district had to have different ways of unlocking uh, the business. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things we did was, as part of that twenty-four-seven group, um, mm -hmm. I didn't want my analysts to burn out as well. So we said we'll we'll have a roster of different people who can support, um, mm -hmm. and we'll do this in such a way that we give twenty-four-seven support, uh, where while not working twenty-four-seven. While still working like eight five or whatever, right nine five. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so we did that, and it's a bunch of really small projects that we did, but mm -hmm. like almost on a daily basis. So we'd get on a daily call with all the top people in the company. There would be some unanswered questions uh, that that would come to us. For example, um, Bangalore is the biggest city for Swiggy, mm -hmm. and during COVID. A lot of the migrants who work in Bangalore went back to their hometowns. Okay? Correct. Mm -hmm. and one of the big centers is the national capital region. Yeah. So, where Zomata has got really good market shares. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, literally, because people moved from south to the north, we <laughs> lost market share to Zomata just because that happened. Okay. Right. So, mm -hmm. But but you don't know this until you look into the data and figure out the migration patterns of people and things like that. These are like simple stuff, but Correct. but we figured out the migration patterns. And as that, if things started improving, we saw the reverse migration as well. And mm -hmm. the market shares started changing back into uh, back into Swiggy's side. Um, so all of those were things that, that we did, which is very, very uh, interesting work and impactful because within six months of the lockdown, we were back to uh, back to pre-COVID levels. Mm -hmm. And maybe 12 months uh, on, we had like grown 30 plus percent and continue to grow now. Yeah. Got it. Interesting. And just a you know, couple of questions which I find really uh, interesting about, uh, you know, business like Swiggy. One, you know, the uh, kind of coupons and, and you know, uh, the uh, entire experience of checking out, right? Uh, so uh, multiple coupons available, which one should be available and then, you know, how do you... Uh, uh, almost incentivize the customer to spend a few more rupees or add, let's say, another dish to to what their uh, basket is. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, from that perspective, uh, uh, you know, what are some of the learnings and in, in, uh, or any specific, uh, you know, learnings you can share? Well, um, I'll give a couple of couple of uh, examples of things that we did, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one is a product that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but if you you were in Bangalore, right? We had at the end of while your order is being delivered, um, mm -hmm. uh, you have this uh, wheel that you can spin, and and the wheel sometimes gives you a coupon. Okay, interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so we had we had like very analytically figured out hey, what percentage of spinners of the wheel should get coupons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, if you're spinning it for the first time, the probability was 80%. Right. Uh, if you're spinning it second or third time, it's like 70 or 60. And then from fifth time onward, it's like 50 50. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. something like that, right? It's like very analytical. Like these numbers are not like randomly done. It's like analytically um, yeah. Also, the coupons that you win. Mm -hmm. um, um, I lost you for a minute. Uh, you're there, right? Okay. The coupons that you win mm -hmm. were were uh, customized to the individual based on the behavior we wanted that person to show. For example, mm -hmm. for example, uh, my my Swiggy behavior was a large number of 
uh, high frequency orders, mm -hmm. but in the 300 rupee range. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, always I'll put a coupon wherever it's needed. I'm very price sensitive that way. Okay. Um, so what it would do is it would give me a coupon which will have like a decent long validity. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but it's only triggers at like 600, 700 rupees. Yeah. Okay. Now it's like, hey, you know, you've been buying for 300. We want you to buy for 400. You use this coupon and increase. Yeah. So maybe like what happens is I'm buying biryani. Yeah. I might end up buying biryani at a start or a biryani start. And mm -hmm. I do it a few times. And then I got a bit of, you know what? That biryani with that dessert looks very good. Let me just constantly do that. Okay. Yeah. So that's one thing we did. The other thing we did was like my wife is the opposite of it. So where we, she does really premium stuff, um, but lower in frequency, but high in order value. Yeah. So she would get coupons which were um, which were like you didn't have any minimum cap. You just get a discount, mm -hmm. but they expire in two days. Okay. Right. Because the frequency was low, frequency um, so you want to make her transact faster. So things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's one example we did. And then the other thing, other thing we did was totally for from the restaurant perspective. Mm -hmm. So restaurants are not very analytically savvy, yeah. but we wanted to help them win. So like, how do we get them to grow, for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's say they give us, okay, we got 10,000 rupees to spend this week. Um, yeah. There are so many coupons that are there. So they can, for example, they can use the 10,000 rupees to like get good quality photographs mm -hmm. um, or have a better choice of recommended items. These are the the organic ways of doing and then there are inorganic ways of doing which is you can you can buy ads and get up in the listing okay mm -hmm. or you can get coupons um and there are many kinds of coupons uh new user coupons uh, returning user coupons dormant user coupons um and within them also like new to brand and new to outlet okay mm -hmm. um different kinds of coupons so this is much complex and each of them has like we want to give 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent all these options right so it's very confusing for people to figure out what to do mm -hmm. um, so one of the things we built was uh, we built a tool which would actually simulate um, what would happen if you chose a certain option okay, okay. interesting and mm -hmm. of course once you simulate you can also optimize so yeah. if they say you know what we've got 10,000 rupees optimize this for us we would actually give them recommendations of you need to do this kind of things to get the best investment. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this was exposed to our salespeople who, when having a discussion with the restaurant, instead of having it like, buy a or you just buy it off, right? Uh, yeah. Buy more, buy more. Right? Instead of that, is you're having lower return based discussion saying, hey, you know what? This seems like the ideal spend, and here is how we want to spend it, and here's the expected returns from it. Um, mm -hmm. And once they do it, a month later, we close the loop and say, you know what, you spend this much and this is actually the loop that you got. Um, I, I would say uh, done in a very low key way, but super impactful again. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so these two examples, one from optimizing to change consumer behavior yeah. and optimizing to ensure that restaurants, um, restaurants get uh, good growth that they've been looking for. Interesting, interesting. And and the, the second aspect is, you know, Swiggy also runs this uh, loyalty program. It's called Swiggy One right now, right? I think that would have launched probably around in the same period. But some, that, yeah. yeah, but for some reason, uh, you know, you uh, as a consumer, I can never uh, buy it for a year or or longer duration it has to be always three months so so any specific you know reason why would you not uh, incentivize a longer term loyal customer that that just look very odd whenever i've tried doing that so, so swiggy uh, so firstly it, it's not a loyalty program it's a subscription program okay sure okay. Uh, we actually wanted a loyalty. loyalty program is where you get points on purchase and then you can use the points right yeah uh, we were actually thinking of a loyalty program uh, mm -hmm. but then it was this two similar value propositions so mm -hmm. we didn't do that um, okay. uh, swiggy super which became swiggy one so mm -hmm. we've had many many iterations of it yeah okay um i and there are times when you could you could buy for the year you could buy okay. like mm -hmm. you could, we had like one month three months 12 month options all of those things okay okay um 
uh, in between we had uh, like hey you know you can if you want three kilometers it's 90 rupees if you want five kilometers it's 150 rupees if you want mm -hmm. infinite it's 250 rupees okay mm -hmm. uh, all of them. i think the reason they do this is just uh, for simplicity um, uh, so there's one option in that you get infinite radius all restaurants included yeah and you just click it and you're done um, mm -hmm. and it's three months so so imagine you had three subscription plans and three time periods or four time periods that's 12 options for customers to choose from this one is just one option simple you click it and you're done okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, i think i think there's a trade-off in conversion between giving options uh, and not giving options the lesser options the higher conversion Okay. Correct. The more yeah. options, lesser conversion, but then it gives flexibility. Um, yeah. I would, I would, I, I was not part of this three months decision, but okay. I would assume that it's probably because the conversion mm -hmm. is the best um, mm -hmm. in this in this world. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's and uh, the other variable which might impact this is the stickiness. So uh, so once I've bought three months, I would have a chance that I would drop off. Uh, what is that number versus if I would have bought 12 months and then presumably it's not very high. That's why they've stuck to uh, a three month option. Uh, Potentially that's another option, which is maybe people renew it more often. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, moving on. So, you know, uh, from Swiggy, you then mentioned you, uh, you know, moved to London for Meta and then again, you know, uh, very interesting uh, uh, problems again that you were, uh, you know, looking at these behaviors which you would not want to uh, people to kind of uh, do on the platform. So, so can you elaborate a bit more on, uh, and maybe if you can explain what would be a potential behavior which you would uh, want to filter out, and then uh, and a bit more on you know uh, what what data science did in that specific yeah so we were uh so there are four kinds of bad things that happen mm -hmm. okay um uh, just we call them actor mm -hmm. behavior content and interactions okay um the interactions can also be thinking you can think of it as don't miss a thing so then it becomes abcd i was trying to get it to abcd but let's mm -hmm. go one by one a stands for actor actor is yeah. where um the person who is um, who is on the on the platform itself is not authentic. Okay, so okay. this could be fake accounts or bot accounts. Yeah, you need to catch or identity before. fraud. Yeah. Okay, that's mm -hmm. one. Second mm -hmm. one is uh, people who misrepresent themselves. Okay, mm -hmm. I can claim to be like a politician. Okay, yeah. I can claim to be Elon Musk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so these are these are different kinds of misses like grown-ups trying to be children children trying to be yeah. grown-ups okay uh, uh, these are all they also romance camps where i'll be like hey you know i'm a veteran i'm stuck in uh, iran okay send me money and i'll come and meet you okay uh, yeah. handsome handsome person right mm -hmm. um, uh, again these are inauthentic profiles that's another kind of account related and the third kind of account related stuff is compromise where your account got hacked um, yeah and then somebody else has control on your account. So no, right. that's that's another way of. So this is all the actor related stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you have something called behavior. So you have a genuine account, but they're yeah. behaving in an engine, non-genuine way. This mm -hmm. is things like fake followers, fake subscription, fake engagement, uh, spam, forwarding, yeah. right? Um, sending requests to people uh, like millions of people. Uh, okay. joining tens of thousands of groups okay so this is like trying to artificially increase your thing uh, yeah. you're not posting anything which is illegal but mm -hmm. the behavior itself is is questionable okay right. uh, like for example instagram can monetize when you have 10000 followers or so okay yeah. and not 50 something like that mm -hmm. okay the growth from let's say 7 to 10 a lot of people happens overnight. Why? Because you can go and buy five thousand followers. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. Um So those things are those things are uh, not authentic behavior. So mm -hmm. that is the behavior part of it. Mm -hmm. Then we have something called content. Content is what we actually think of as bad stuff, which is mm -hmm. hate speech, fake news, uh, vaccine misinformation, 
uh, adult nudity, uh, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. What you think of as the bad stuff, um, mm -hmm. like racist comments, uh, things like that. So, um, so this is all is what is called content. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we have something called interactions where there are multiple people involved. Okay, mm -hmm. also like I said, it's also don't miss a thing. This is where there are the really uh, bad stuff. Okay, so mm -hmm. you could have bad stuff from a monetary perspective where you could get scammed for thousands of dollars. Um, mm -hmm. But there are also bad stuff like uh, child safety, um, yeah. uh, your uh, intimate images getting leaked, for example, mm -hmm. and people threatening to post it on uh, Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. suicide, self-injury, um, uh, credible threat of violence. Somebody has uh, said, you know, there's a bomb here and they said it live on Facebook, right? So these are all the things uh, which are in the interactions world. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the, the whole landscape. So I was doing actor, anything which is account specific and the mm -hmm. last one, the interactions one, the, the mm -hmm. more egregious kind of one. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's what my role was. Yeah. And and uh, 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 how many uh, how big is this team which is monitoring this? So so at at uh, meta scale, how many uh, data scientists? So there, are, there are two ways to monitor it. One mm -hmm. is for humans to do it. Um, yeah. And uh, publicly, it's known that tens of thousands of people are working in this moderation world. Mm -hmm. okay. But of course, it's impossible to monitor all the content. Um, okay. Therefore, we have tech systems which do that. Um, yeah. We have this org called the Integrity Org, um, mm -hmm. where we have maybe multiple thousands of people working on this, um, mm -hmm. um, mostly engineers. Um, uh, the, the science team was about maybe 200, 300 people or so, um, sure. maybe mm -hmm. 200 people or so. So that's that's what it was. Interesting. And. Uh... How do you uh, structure something like this? Uh, because and and I'm you know probably drawing a parallel to uh, financial world, right? So there, if you have to detect fraud, there are probably two or three things where uh, which you see that whether the transaction is which is happening is fraud, and, and then there could be multiple reasons. But the outcome is very uh, you know simple to say whether there is a fraud or not. In this case, you know the uh, activities itself for example in case of actors uh, were all of these kind of uh, uh, defined as individual problems or they were you know uh, uh, def uh, a combined cluster of problems was one statement so so how how do you break something like this into uh, a data science problem and then how was this uh, each, of, each of these would have its own specific way of handling it mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, Actually, even a specific problem, let's say fake account, mm -hmm. itself will have many, many classifiers working. Okay. It. For example, when when traffic comes from some location, mm -hmm. there are classifiers which figure out is that a genuine location, authentic location. Okay. Yeah. Um, most of the bad stuff gets blocked like that. Okay. And then there is a sign up process. Mm -hmm. There is a certain way of filling the form. Uh, which bots do? Uh, can you catch yeah. the bots right there? Okay, mm -hmm. and then let's say you finish sign up, um, and once you finish signing, up, and then there's there's a volume of sign up rooms. Right? If you're doing ten thousand sign up rooms, say my IP, that's bad. Yeah. Then there's you signed up, and we'll watch you for the first twenty four hours. Okay. Um, is there something that you're doing which which gives hints that you're fake? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there is the one day to seven days, and then there is the rest of the accounts. Okay, um, so in all of these, we we have specific classifiers which work on it. Okay, um, the 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 ML teams at Facebook are very good. Mm -hmm. you give them a target, they will they will make the target. Okay, um, the the problems that we faced is. Mm -hmm. um, for example, our fake accounts, uh, these are publicly available information. We catch 99% of all the fake accounts. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen results of uh, ML, ML that's been done. Mm -hmm. Anything over 80, 85% is considered good. Like you yeah. good quality of mm -hmm. These people are 99% level. Yeah. Okay? But if you look at a billion people, 
you have still yeah. got 10 million fake accounts there. Okay. Correct. So because of the scale that uh, Facebook operates, despite being like much better than anyone else in the industry, the one hmm. person still causes us problems. Okay. Correct. If you know, a million people sign up every day uh, and all fake, for example, and you let go, uh, you're getting 10,000 fake accounts every day. Okay. Yeah. That's a big problem. Uh, although yeah. the ML is like Western class. So the, the stage that Meta is at, right? We have to figure out um, exactly what is the precision and recall of the classifiers. Okay. Right. And, mm -hmm. and because of the scales that are doing, this is done using some kind of sampling mechanisms to figure that out. Okay. Um, find the precision, find the recall. Precision is um, uh, how many mistakes we're making in in uh, in uh, excluding people. So we said something was fake. Uh, that is precision. If we get it right, it's precision. If we get it wrong, one minus precision uh, yeah. is actually the people we are blocking because. We made a mistake. Okay. Yeah. On the other side, recall is we said it's normal, and then we made a mistake. So one minus recall is the amount of fake accounts we're actually letting in. Okay. Correct. And of course, the original recall will always stay it off. Yeah. Um, so now we have very carefully measured what precision is, what recall is, and uh, very sophisticated measurement techniques, sampling techniques to figure out how these things happen, and mm -hmm. and then we identify those those extreme outliers uh which is still millions of accounts right uh, <laughs> and then figure out what is the reason they're getting in and mm -hmm. can we get our uh, classifiers to get like a few basis points more right uh and which will be like millions thousands lots of accounts keep them safer or or block them faster right um, yeah so that was the main purpose of it so there are there are hundreds uh, of classifiers that are there, um, mm -hmm. and each of these would go through the similar process of what's the precision, what's the recall, uh, what are the trade-offs that we want to make. Um, mm -hmm. So, because of, for example, if you're if you're on the self-injury side, um, yeah. you don't want to miss anything. So the recall there needs to be hundred percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so which means, so for example, if uh, these are these are cases where like an adult uh, has set up a date with a child and they're meeting them in the real world. Okay. That's real world danger that we see. Um, yeah. So every day we call the cops on, uh, uh, again, these are public numbers. You should up maybe 10 to 20 people. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to miss anything, which means uh, recall is 100% or close to 100, which means yeah. you're making precision issues, which means right. some of those 20 people are normal people and and they're getting the cops called them. Big PR issue, right? Um, lots of really sensitive trade-offs to make. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and, and yeah, so and like somebody's trying to do suicide, you call the cops on them. You're saving lives, right? Um, yeah. The more more people who are saved because of that is better. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, about twenty people, uh, we actually call the cops on them. They go and save their lives, right? Um, so, so these are very sensitive trade-off that they made, um, and it's very, really very sophisticated measurements, uh, very sophisticated enforcement systems to ensure that things are happening properly. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, you know the nature of fraud is usually it would move in cycles or circles typically, right? So, so you built a classifier for a particular behavior, and then the people wanting to go through would would change their behavior and improve that that's that's the nature of the game right who who is smarter at what point uh, uh, there's, so, there's a few things like right? um mm. there are things which where the classifier can be good and it's good like for example if somebody posts nudity by mistake right mm -hmm. um, the better the classifier you catch it and you're good so yeah. a lot of those are like really high if they don't make mistakes at all. Um, yeah. There are other things like hacking, for example, where yeah. the person who's doing the hacking doesn't have good intention or they are not doing it by mistake. Okay. Right. Um, so, so those are people who will try to exploit the systems. So if the system gets better, 
the adversaries get better. So we are, we call it adversarial uh, uh, yeah, adversarial problems, right? Which is where every every day is a new problem, it's like highly one. For example, what happens is, let's say you have a hundred new ways that you want to explore to hack, right? Yeah. Uh, you send a million bots to do it. Right. Um, 99% fail in this, one of them is gets through, right? Yeah. Um, you know that exploitation. That itself is 10,000 accounts. What happens is, the moment those 10,000 accounts are created or hacked, the hacker knows what to do. The next yeah. day, it will be like 10 million, 100 million, just like crazily high numbers. So it's a very yeah. spiky world, and therefore our alerting systems, our engineering teams who have to RCA to figure out what is the reason that that exploit has happened. Okay. Yeah. They have to super agile and fix things really fast. Okay, because adversarial problems uh, they scale up super fast. Okay, it's okay. it's not it's not a cycle of months or years. It's like every day there's there's a chance that something bad will happen. Okay. Correct, correct. And and uh, while leading this team, what was your uh, you know schedule like? So was it like? Uh, uh, you were spending a lot more time on these, uh, 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 let's say, new problems, or was it still, you know, a healthy mix between getting the next version of these classifiers out uh, and then uh, uh, some time devoted to? I, it, was, it was a mix. It was a mix. Um, mm -hmm. There are some uh, some classifiers like paid accounts, for example, which are really good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we we were trying to, of course, improve them. Uh, yeah. How to get them to improve and things like that were there. Um, compromise is a very tough space to be in. Um, right. So how do we get hacked accounts recovered faster? How do we block them sooner? Um, yeah. So for example, let's say you got hacked, and um, the hacker is able to log in. The yeah. first thing they do is they change your email and phone number. Okay. Uh, so now how do you get your access back? Because you say, hey, you know, here's my password. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, it's, but two people are saying, I know the password. Okay. Send a reset link to my email. No, 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 don't send it because it's not my email. Okay. Okay. Can you send an OTP to my phone? No, 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 please send it. It's, don't send it. It's not my email. How do I verify who's the real person, right? Um, yeah. Tough problem. Tough problem. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so there were improvements we were doing there. And there are other things like, for example, one of the things we have was on child safety. Mm -hmm. um, Places like Instagram, is not Instagram, the, the messenger product that Facebook has, mm -hmm. um, there's something called end-to-end uh, -end encryption, where no. Facebook will not see what's happening inside. Yeah. Um, just like WhatsApp, right? Facebook doesn't yeah. see what's on your WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. um, now, how do you identify and catch child safety issues when you're unable to read the messages? Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. And because that was a new thing in the industry that they were trying, mm -hmm. um, we like, now how do we figure out how to catch these people? Uh, yeah, right. Earlier we were able to read them, so now we can't read. So now what do yeah. we do? Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, that is like a new thing that we're building. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, not just that unwanted interactions uh, with strangers, like that's a whole larger scope. So how yeah. do we do that? So that's another problem we had, which we were trying to do. We had a, bunch of improvements, uh, some new problems you'll solve. Interesting, interesting. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, moving to your next role, uh, which is with Uber. Now, again, you know, very different domain, mobility, and uh, I'm presuming new set of challenges. And here, challenges would be more around, uh, you know, customer uh, satisfaction with the cabs, the driver satisfaction or interactions with the customers so so can you tell a bit more about the kind of problems you're working on in uber and then again how do they impact the life of the customer yes yes so i have four chunks of uh, teams that i have at uber so one of them is um uh, is called mobility growth which is how do we uh, ensure conversion once mm -hmm. nobody comes out to the app Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is like things like, can we keep you engaged until we find a cab? Yeah. Okay. If if let's say Uber Go is not available, can we suggest an upgrade so that you get your car? Okay. Yeah. Anything which is um, 
uh, helping the conversion happen. Second thing is things that we do at an Uber uh, individual level okay, mm-hmm. uh, to make them more successful. For example, if somebody is an Uber Eats user, uh, can we get them to Uber rides and vice versa, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if if somebody is a very important uh, customer, can we give a protective bubble to them? So if somebody is declining, if they're not getting their benefit, uh, can we auto upgrade them to a higher taxi at our cost, right? So things like that, yeah. protective bubbles. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are things at user level as well as at the conversion level that we do in mobility. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have then I have something called uh, mobility new verticals. Um, okay. mm-hmm. These are things apart from the regular Uber. So for example, we have something called electricity vehicles. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, this is like Uber buses that we have uh, live in many cities across the world, including India. Not mm-hmm. in Bangalore, but it's there in Delhi, Bombay, yeah. Hyderabad. I think we're just starting in Chennai and Kolkata as well. Okay. Uh, maybe, I don't know if we're doing Pune, but yeah, so these are the cities, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so then we have uh, Uberism, where we've changed the algorithm that we used to have. Mm-hmm. Now the reliability is like super good, very good, but mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not at the level where we're happy with. Okay, so now how do we improve the reliability of the reserve product? Okay. Um, that's something we're working on. Um, mm-hmm. then, then we have intercity, uh, intercity and hourly rentals. Okay. Yeah. We also have car rentals, which is like a Avis or Hertz or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you can also do car rentals on Uber. So we have somebody working on that. So these are all the new verticals that we have. Of course, mm-hmm. I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, but that's what it is. Sure. Thirdly, we have this what we call as uh, earners. So earners is anything, earner, anything okay. to do with anything to do with uh, the driver or the courier. Okay, so remember Uber Eats has got the Eats business, uh, and Uber also is the Uber. So Uber has got both Eats and uh, mobility. So yeah. mobility are for drivers, and Eats uh, people who deliver are for couriers. Okay. Yeah. So earner is a mixer of both. Yeah. How do we get them access as soon as possible? To today it takes multiple days for a driver to sign up. Mm-hmm. Uh, can we do it in minutes, for example? Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's something we're trying to do. Can we personalize the journey from sign up to uh, to stability? Okay. Get them the gigs that they want. Things like that. Yeah. So that's that's the uh, earner chapter. Um, mm-hmm. Then I have something called the vehicle chapter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here. I don't know if you know this, but about 20% of Uber is fleet vehicles, which is means they are not owned by, by the yeah. drivers. Either the fleets or they are rented by the driver. So how do we get uh, to manage them? So fleet fleet managers might want to manage their fleets using Uber tools. Okay? Mm-hmm. And drivers who don't own a car uh, would require a marketplace where they can either rent a car or where they can work for a, uh, work for a similar company. right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, so work for fleet companies. So this whole thing is the fleet's world. Uh, we also across the world we are, we have something called hailables. Hailables mm-hmm. are things where you wave your hand and get into that vehicle. Okay. So in in uh, in most of India these are autos. Um, in in uh, in most of the Western world these are like the yellow cabs or black cabs right. or mm-hmm. hail right? In South America, we have motorcycles are also as hailables. Okay? okay, so that's the hailable starter. So one of the biggest thing we're trying to do is to see if we can merge the supply of taxis, which is the yellow taxis, with Ubers. So in New yeah. York today, if you order an Uber X, uh, mm-hmm. we send the request both to Uber drivers as well as to taxi drivers, the like yellow cab drivers. Mm-hmm. And there is a chance that you get matched with a yellow car driver, uh, and they may come and pick you up. Okay. okay. Um, at the price of an Uber X, uh, which is like a great option for both the parties because right. Uber on one side has got a lot of demand, whereas mm-hmm. the taxi companies have a lot of supply, and it's a good way to find demand and supply. So mm-hmm. um, from from the days when the taxi drivers were enemies of Uber, uh, or at least they felt that Uber was their enemy, yeah. now we have moved to a time where they're all working together. Okay. So that's that's the scalable startup. Uh, mm-hmm. Doing really well across the world at this point of time, um, and then and then I have the last one, which is on the eat side. Um, mm-hmm. uh, on the delivery side, we have uh, a 
team which is working on merchants. How do you uh, onboard them faster? Um, which ones should we actively pursue because they are better for customers, better for Uber, better for themselves? Um, how do we ensure that they grow well by giving them insights? Um, and if if there are um, if there are uh, defects that are happening, how do we minimize the defects? For example, a courier can pick up the wrong bag and go, right? Yeah. Uh, so now, if you pick up the wrong bag, then there are two people who've, who've lost out now. Uh, uh, so, how do we prevent those kind of defects, right? Okay. Um, how do we ensure the right items are in the bag in the first place? So, those are things that we're working on as well. So, that's like the full chart that I have. Got it. Um, and still a team that is being built. So, of course, you ask me next week, I'll have two more channels. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Interesting, interesting. And uh, uh, again, in terms of st uh, structuring, so each of these are different teams, and each pe uh, each of these problems would be handled by, uh, let's say, a few people, and they would have their own models and their own. Uh, yeah, the way Uber works is um, these are uh, fully self-sufficient teams consisting of engineering, product design, and science. Mm -hmm. um, so they work very closely together. They may report into different people, but that's a team. So, for example, for high capacity vehicles, so we have we have the engineering, high, all of them co-located, mm -hmm. and we are building the product together. So that's that's how it works. Okay, same but, for reserve A levels or something. Yeah, and among these, you know, wide range of problems, which one uh, do you think is the most difficult one to solve? at the current scenario and then which one do you feel the most excited about uh, 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 solving um i would i would choose the non consumer facing ones mm -hmm. okay uh, uh, because i think consumers because all of us are consumers we get it okay yeah. mm -hmm. what does a restaurant want out of a uber platform okay mm -hmm. Uh, a common person is unable to articulate that. Or what is what is happening in the mind of the driver of the car? Yeah. Okay. What's mm -hmm. their mindset towards Uber? And these are things which are where you need deep empathy with uh, a business or an individual uh, mm -hmm. who is different from us, right? Yeah. Um, so I think the non-consumer facing thing, especially uh, merchant growth, how do we get merchants to be successful? Uh, mm -hmm. How do we get loyalty from our partners? Uh, so these are things which I would say are uh, things that the kind of uh, I'm focused on. Of course, the a lot of the fun things come from the consumer side of course. Okay, for example, uh, have you seen have you seen a small tiny game come up when you're waiting for your? Company? No, it hasn't been served to me yet. <laughs> okay, so we are experimenting on it. Okay, mm -hmm. so while this is before you get back. while you are while you are looking for it. Right. Uh, there's a tiny game which comes up, and you can you can play it. You know what it does? It it gives you a minute of less anxiety. Right. While you're playing the game, and yeah. that minute is an extra minute we have to find the car. Car. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, so simple things. It's like really fun stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, no, but and very very impactful at at a global level. For so. Simple things. For example, one of the things we did was, uh, if your car takes more than five minutes to come, mm -hmm. uh, when it is three minutes away, you get a buzz on your phone. That's it. It's a long buzz you get on your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, what it does is many people uh, put the phone after booking their car and just go away. Okay, uh, and they're like whatever they're doing, right? The buzz. What it does is it reminds them. You know what? Your car is here. Yeah, they're like, oh, thanks for reminding me. I'll walk out and meet the person at the meeting point. Um, that has actually reduced uh, cancellations both from driver side as well as the rider side, uh, just because you know they're reminded that this is where you're supposed to meet. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, simple, really simple things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Very impactful. So, but yeah, but, but really tough problems are actually on the side where we don't understand what's in the mind of the user right like the merchant like the like the driver 
obviously. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. And uh, for you, you mentioned that you are, uh, you know, building this team and growing this team. So, so what does next, uh, let's say, 12 to 18 month look like? Uh, how much uh, uh, growth um, are you expecting? Yeah. Well, that, um, I, I don't know for sure. Um, sure. The reason I don't know, but we're still in the part of uh, part of twenty four planning, and mm-hmm. our CEO has said that um, Uber will be flat headed out. Okay. okay. Uh, mm-hmm. All of twenty twenty four. Um, so I don't know if we'll have any growth, but just if I say long term, right? Mm-hmm. Long term goal is to see if we get thirty percent of tech in India. Um, mm-hmm. So today, engineering is already there, um, but science is was maybe two to three percent. Mm-hmm. Um, I've joined and it's become like six percent or so, um, okay. but it's still small, small yeah. overall. So we might end up at some point, maybe long term future at the thirty percent level. Okay, interesting, interesting. And uh, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, just in interest of time, uh, uh, how how do what are your thoughts on you know the entire generative AI? Uh, you know, momentum and then the kind of activity we have seen in the last few quarters. Uh, how do you feel about it? I I have mixed thoughts, frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. On one side, I love ChatGPT uh, for my personal use. I was just telling somebody that in April I wanted to organize a treasure hunt at home. Mm-hmm. So I asked ChatGPT to give me the clues. Okay, um, many tens of hours of but that I would have spent planning the treasure and we just did it like that. Okay. And then I said, you know what? I need these answers. Now give me the questions for the answers. So it gave the questions. And then I said, tell me the rules. Um, so it gave the rules also. So it like, man, it was amazing. Okay. So mm-hmm. the, the power of uh, Jenny is, is really good. Okay. Right. Um, what it doesn't do. So it's best for where creativity is needed, where you actually need to generate something. Correct. Okay. So, for example, I was talking to people who were like, hey, we are supply chain folks. Okay. Uh, can we use Gen AI in supply chain? I'm like, supply chain is a determinate problem where right. all the variables are known to you. you the, it's a massive optimization problem which requires better quality optimization techniques or operations research techniques okay yeah. and these are determinant for jna is not going to help you okay. yeah. um if you look at a lot of the business problems we have today mm-hmm. they are mostly determinant problems okay mm-hmm. how do i match the best driver to the rider it is there are 10 drivers there are 10 riders who placed orders now it is no amount of creativity is needed there. You need optimization and operations research there. Okay. Correct. Um, or simple things like, hey, you know, I have these five ads. Uh, which of these five is the best ad? Right. To target for my customers. You know, can you create 10 segments or 1,000 segments of customers and see which segment likes these five ads? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be simple experimentation. You could do multi bandits, for example. Um, so that's that word. The right. amount of creativity needed to solve today's business problem is not very high. Right? Correct. Okay. For example, one of the things we are trying out in Uber is you press the mic in the Uber Eat section and say, "Hey, you know what? I want to uh, I want to plan a, a birthday party. What yeah. do I need to order?" Okay. Imagine Uber Eats kind of creates a basket for you. Correct. All you need to do is go buy it, right? Um, mm. That's a super good use case of Gen AI. Or, hey, my order is delayed or, or my grapes in my grocery basket was spoiled. Can you please give me a refund? Okay. Right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry you felt bad about the grapes getting spoiled. I know they cost you 40 rupees, so here's a refund. Okay, Gen AI kind of works. But also yeah. there, you need the Gen AI to follow the policies of the company has set. You don't want creativity there. <laughs> okay. So, so we are. So, I think these use cases are where you need creativity, uh, yeah. especially in in the open ended uh, planning a birthday party. Uh, or I have a few colleagues coming. Home. Okay. Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are this many vegetarians, this many non vegetarians. 
drinkers, non-drinkers. Okay, find me a basket for this. Okay, um, so those that kind of things is where Jenna will really good at. So that's that's what I would say uh, is is uh, uh, where it should be used. Don't yeah. use it for the yeah. more determinate kind of. I mean, most of the problems are determinate, by the way. Yeah, right. But from from a potential perspective, it is it is amazing. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah great great thanks thanks a lot david for uh, you know sharing your insight sharing the kind of problems i think uh, you know fascinating work first of all i think tremendous amount of learning uh, for for the community for people listening to this so thanks a lot for uh, sharing that and uh, you know spending this time and we look forward to have you again in, in our community in future thanks a lot thank you thanks for having me